Trump spends the weekend at Walter Reed Hospital and White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany tests positive for COVID-19. <laughs> and Parkland parents use artificial intelligence video of their dead son to push gun control. We've got that and much more, and it starts right now. Hey there, happy Monday. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Hillary Kennedy, and if for some reason you missed last week and you're wondering why I'm here, it's because the beautiful Sarah Gonzalez is at home enjoying her new baby. So I'm here today filling in, but I have with me Radio Hall of Famer, Glenn Beck. <laughs> happy to have you here. Thank you. And then Blaze TV contributor Eric July, also the host of For Canon Say. Glad uh -huh. you guys are here. Thank you, thank you. So there's a lot going on this weekend, and we actually just got an update on some of the things that you may have been watching on TV or on your smartphone, uh, including a Trump Instagram post that just came up recently. He says, I will be leaving the great Walter Reed Medical Center today at 6.30 p.m. feeling really good. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. <laughs> we have developed under the Trump administration some really great drugs and knowledge. I feel better than I did 20 years ago. This guy <laughs> is going to turn the tables on all of the all of the little girls that are hiding behind their skirts <laughs> like Jake Tapper. Oh my gosh, this is so dangerous. Here's a 75-year-old guy who eats McDonald's every day and he's fine. He is experiencing what most of us have experienced. Mm -hmm. Everyone in my family got COVID. Everybody. I didn't. I'm the most susceptible. I didn't get it. I took, I took the hydroxychloroquine. As soon as they started getting sick, I was the last one. And I'm like, oh, geez, because everybody got sick right away. I started taking it, never had a problem with it. Wow. Most people I know that have it have had the, the antigen now, has the antibodies, but they never even noticed that they were sick. Most people I know said it was just like a summer cold or a summer flu. It kills less than the flu does. What are we doing? Well, and I think Trump, you know, felt he felt well enough that he addressed the nation in a four minute video late Saturday explaining how his health had improved since arriving at Walter Reed. And I think we have a clip of that. I want to begin by thanking all of the incredible medical professionals, the doctors, the nurses, everybody at Walter Reed Medical Center. I think it's the finest in the world for the incredible job they've been doing. Uh, I came here wasn't feeling so well. I feel much better now. We're working hard to get me all the way back. I have to be back. It's fantastic. Because we still have to make America great again. We've done an awfully good job of that, but we still have steps to go and we have to finish that job. And I'll be back. I think I'll be back soon. And I look forward to finishing up the campaign the way it was started and the way we've been doing and the kind of numbers that we've been doing. We've been so proud of it. But this was something that happened, and it's happened to millions of people all over the world, and I'm fighting for them. So a lot of people were asking, well, what kind of treatment did he get? And his physician uh, released that information. He said on Saturday he completed his second dose of remdesivir without any complications. They said he's remained fever-free, off the supplemental oxygen with a saturation level between 96 and 98 percent all day. They said he spent most of the afternoons conducting business, that he'd been up and moving about the medical suite without any difficulty. They said he wasn't out of the woods yet on Saturday, but they were, you know, optimistic, and obviously they were if rightfully you, optimistic. If you look at some of the tweets that the press, I mean, they've They've tied themselves in knots over this. Just on that photo that is sitting there right now where he's at the desk and he's writing papers, I actually saw a bunch of journalists saying, look how pale he looks. <laughs> you, he doesn't look orange, okay? <laughs> you call him the orange man. He looks normal. He looks normal. Now, do you think him being in the hospital was this kind of made people think it was a sign of weakness or do you think it even mattered mm -hmm. to most people? Well, I think that that's what people wanted it to be mm -hmm. more so than what it was. I mean, I think when you say president. people, are we referring, well, to, referring to leftists? Well, we're referring to leftists. Leftists in the press. Yeah, go, yeah. Okay, all let's, right. Let's good. be more precise all right, yeah. uh, uh, with it. But that's what they wanted. And of course, you know, he's the president, so he, he's going to get as much treatment as he possibly can. Uh, no matter what the percentage rate of him surviving it, which is very, very high uh, of him doing that. But 
like Glenn said, they're going to turn the tables uh, on a Trump rather is because what they did is they painted themselves in a corner like they thought mm-hmm. this was some I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They was later. They were, you know, all the memes came out and they were just dogging on him. Like, see, he doesn't wear a mask. He catches it, though. That seems to be antithetical to how they told me the mask works. I thought someone <laughs> else's mask was supposed to protect him, not the one that he's wearing. Um, but nonetheless, that's what they did. And now he's he's he was rather healthy. He was walking around. He's been posting all of these video updates, which uh, that obviously works to it, his advantage. And to see left is definitely these guys who these it's anti fantastic. sort of Q kind of kind of <laughs> guys come up with these extravagant conspiracies mm-hmm. um, to try to make sense of this. And it's just doing what it's done with virtually everybody else for the most part that's have it had it even in, in his own age group that has had it most for the most part they get it they're generally fine uh they may go to the hospital they may get sick uh but most of them are going to be are going to be okay for whatever reason despite what all the evidence says despite what what even the cdc has said uh which they praise as the, their lord and savior despite what all the numbers around all of the other countries say as, as as it pertains to the survivability rate of this virus they're still clinging on to this like apocalyptic virus mm-hmm. as if this is going to kill more than it let's say makes you sick now they're focusing on the quote unquote long-term effects uh they move the post they have to keep doing that because they're still clinging on to this idea and it really looks as if they get caught with egg on their face so the tables are going to turn if you thought he was loud before (laughs) now that he's got it and he's generally going to be fine you're not going to hear the end of it and i'm all here for it here i read some stats today on radio that are absolutely remarkable um if you look at all of the nations okay we have the 10th highest death rate. We have the 10th highest. It's horrible. Except we count car accidents. If you have accidents. motorcycle <laughs> accidents. So we're counting a lot of stuff that other countries don't Aren't count. Counting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And if you just remove the state of New York, just remove that, we go from 10th to 47th. That's how bad it was in New York. New York, and that ain't Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been really interesting because he's kept in contact, like you said, with videos and mm-hmm. posts and talked to his supporters. So he surprised his supporters outside of Walter Reed and shared a COVID-19 update saying, you know, great reports from the doctors. So we have a clip of his little surprise. We're getting great reports from the doctors. This is an incredible hospital, great. Walter he Reed. He looks great. The work they do is just absolutely amazing, and I want to thank them all. Like that. The <laughs> nurses, the doctors, everybody here. I've also gotten to meet some of the soldiers and the first responders, and what a group. I also think we're going to pay a little surprise to some of the great patriots that we have out on the street, and they've been out there for a long time, and they've got Trump flags, and they love our country. so. I'm not telling anybody but you, but I'm about to make a little (laughs) surprise visit. So perhaps I'll get there before you get to see me. Uh, But I just, uh, when I look at the enthusiasm, and we have enthusiasm like probably nobody's ever had. Our people that love the job we're doing, we have more enthusiasm than maybe anybody. So uh, it's been a very interesting journey. I learned a lot about COVID. I learned it by really going to school. Mm. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. And I get it and I understand it. (laughs) And it's a very interesting thing. I'm going to be letting you know about it. In the meantime, we love the USA and we love what's happening. Thank you. So he did have a handful of supporters that came out Friday night. Then hundreds of people assembled on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Uh, They had a really nice prayer rally for the president. Um, So they were back again on Sunday to provide encouragement for him. And then he did a little impromptu drive by uh he was masked he waved to supporters i think we have some video of that as no well. uh, i mean please watch there are other people in that car that he has endangered secret service people that he has endangered the cops now? they're in the car with him and i learned from i think it was cnn that that car that particular car is uh has its own uh air supply and so it is it's recycling air there's no fresh air in that car that's bull crap 
I know how those cars are made. You don't recycle the air when you don't have to recycle the air. Second of all, at what point they're worried about the Secret Service guys getting a cold. <laughs> I don't know if they know this, but it's their job to stand in front and get a bullet. I mean, this is not the riskiest thing they've done. And again, it's not the president's fault that they're sitting there. He can say at any time, leave me alone. Constitutionally, they can't. He can't tell anyone, leave me alone. I'm going for a drive. Please. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is interesting to see that these guys now care about law enforcers and, and, no. <laughs> and protectors uh, again. That was one of the bizarre things that wow. I saw come out of that in Seattle. So people were just so worried about the oh Secret Service and just well, they cared so say. much about, about their health and, and, and well-being, which... These I'm, federal officers. Right, it's, that's it's, weird. It's bizarre. It's, yeah. It's, 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 but wow. no, they, they were... Look... Who knows? Those guys probably already had it. For all, all we know, I, I believe I was reading the other day that it was, uh, plenty of Secret Service members had had it. They're obviously immune to it because they had it already. They had developed the antibodies. And like you said, it's a cold. For fo folks to be worried more about that, like, oh, we're putting them at risk. Like, I mean, what Nobody, about maybe getting shot or, yeah. or something? Of Nobody <laughs> worried while Hillary Clinton was throwing lamps at the Secret Service. <laughs> You're, you were in greater danger with her. With her than taking a ride with Donald Trump. Well, it is really, really interesting because so many leftists and journalists, they were so upset by the fact that he did this and, and did his drive by with his mask on. He was socially distant. But even uh, the conservative blogger for The Washington Post even said Trump should face criminal charges if oh, the Secret up. Service personnel becomes infected. Oh, shut up. She said, I would hope if any harm comes to those agents, the Attorney General of Maryland would indict Trump for reckless endangerment, assault, yes, the virus he gives <laughs> off counts. What? She said the GOP is a death cult. There's only one pro-life party, cult. and it's not them. A death cult. The GOP, the ones trying to stop abortion, the ones who are like, hey, all lives matter. Black lives matter, yes. But police officers' lives matter. Everybody's life matters. We're the death cult? You can kill a baby after birth? But we're the, the death, death cult. cult. Huh. They pulled that one out of out of nowhere. But that's what me and my boys were talking about this like a couple months back about how that was kind of how they were going to gear that. Mm -hmm. Like it, they hadn't gone there yet. But people wanting to have that sort of approach, definitely local um, po politicians and so forth, as if you're putting someone else in danger uh, and they would ch generally charge you. And we talk about it like there's no way that they would they would at least go that far. But it seems like that's the route that they want to go again. These guys are going to cling to this apocalypse like it, it's the apocalypse is never going to come mm -hmm. because they need that to to be true in order for the narratives to to work or whatever power hungry this, politicians. This, him, this couldn't have been better, I think. I think yeah. because old people have been scared to death, scared to death. Yes. And if you are unhealthy, you should be very cautious of this, just like the flu. Yeah. OK, just like the flu. But it's not April. We have we know what this is much more than we did back in last last March and April. So they have scared people to death old people to death, tried to make it so old people don't want to go out and vote. Here's a guy their age, 75, gets it, goes to the hospital. Two days later, he's like, I'm good. And even when he was bad, he looked pretty good. good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he walked to the, um, what is it, helicopter, wherever he was walking, yeah. he, he looked fine. He's waving it's, and every, everything. Is, it's like, I, I understand why they need, want that apocalypse mm -hmm. so bad. You see the angles that they're taking and trying to present themselves as heroes. And that's the sort of egotistical type yeah. of people that we're that we're dealing with. And people just don't want to come. They don't want to come to that realization that that's how it is. It, you look at the numbers and you're like this. The actions don't match up with this. I was like, well, you look at all these power hungry people. You look at all mm -hmm. these celebrities. You look at all these brands mm -hmm. and how they benefit from not even the fact that the virus is apocalyptic because it's not, but they if they can just give you the impression 
that that's the case, they benefit from it monetarily or power wise. And that's what they're going to cling on until maybe even next, maybe after the election, they're still going to cling to that. You cannot have the economy recover. You cannot have people return to normal because that goes against the narrative that Donald Trump screwed everything up and he's never going to be able to repair it. It is absolute asinine. And I I hope the American people see it. I, I mean, I am shocked every day I get up and I see a poll that 50 percent say, oh, the Democratic Party is my party. How? How? It, I mean, I used to understand it because they would never come out and you'd be like, OK, they're lying to you. But now they're saying, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to add states. Uh, we agree with, you know, the the riots in the streets. Hey, here's some Marxism for you. We're going to get rid of the free market system. You're like, wait, wait. Oh, Are ahead. you still with them? All kinds of extremes, and we have some examples when we come back of what the media and Jake Tapper, the way that they wanted to paint the picture when Donald Trump was showing us something else. So we're going to do that when we come back. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile, because leftist corporations like Verizon, they have empowered radicals to tear our country apart by funding their efforts. Most recently sending $10 million to Al Sharpton and some others, and it, it started with impeachment and then exploiting the pandemic, and then it was followed by violent riots, and now they are threatening violence over filling the vacant seat on the Supreme Court. Well, Patriot Mobile shares your values, and they won't send your hard-earned money to aid in the destruction of America or fund Planned Parenthood. You can get the same nationwide service and support a company that loves America and shares your values and supports our police. The switching is easy. You can keep your phone number. You can bring your own phone or you can buy a new one. And now they have their best offer yet. You can get a free month of service or a free phone plus free activation with the offer code NEWS. So just go to patriotmobile.com news or you could call their U.S.-based customer service team at 972-PATRIOT. That's 972-PATRIOT. And veterans and first responders, they save even more. So please Make the switch today. That's patriotmobile.com slash news, patriotmobile.com slash news or 972 Patriot. We'll be right back. Well, the media had a field day when mm -hmm. Donald Trump went to the hospital and Jake Tapper over at CNN, he took aim at Trump, of course, saying you have become a symbol of your own failures. And we have a clip of his stern message. Mm. The Americans who don't listen to science or medicine, who think masks are too intrusive, who pack bars, who willfully risk spreading the virus, you are making it worse for all of us. You are extending how long this pandemic will last. And it is tragic to say, many if not most of you are taking your cues from the leader of the free world. No, we're not. Last weekend, at an event held both inside and outside, but with no masks required and no distancing, President Trump introduced his Supreme Court nominee. Mm. So far, at least eight attendees of that event have tested positive for the virus. Look at Senator Mike Lee at this event. My God, how oh. are future generations gonna try to make sense of these images of yeah. the Republican leaders of the nation acting like this during a once in a century pandemic with more than 200,000 Americans dead? Oh, my gosh. You know what? Um, the good news is for the left, um, uh, our children won't have to make sense of those images because they control our history books and they never put anything about <laughs> Republicans in them. Um, the, uh, the, the, the amazing thing is we take our, uh, we're taking our cues from our president. No, we're not. We're Americans. We make our own decisions. We, we weigh the risks and the benefits. Mm -hmm. Are there stupid people that go crowd into a bar? Yeah, you know who most of them are? The people who are voting for Joe Biden or campaigning for Joe Biden who are in their 20s. You know why they're doing it? Not because they want to die, but because they know they're not going to die. <laughs> they know it's bull crap. So don't put me, just because I'm skeptical of a mask, I'm only quoting the uh, WHO and their 10 Count them, 10 studies on masks. I love the people who wear the mask like this. 
<laughs> that doesn't help, okay? You have to cover the whole nose. I love the people, like me, who wear glasses, and then you have a mask on, and then what happens when you breathe? They fog up. Yep. You know why? Because your hot air is going out and in around the mask. <laughs> they don't work. They don't make a damn bit of difference. But if that's what makes you feel good, great. I happen to be an independent American. If I'm going to go see somebody, I will go get a real mask. I have them. And I'll make sure that the nose is pinched down and it is sealed as good as I can get. We had somebody on our staff today who walked in. He has a suppressed immune system. We immediately didn't approach him. We called him and said, leave, leave. We don't, we don't want any chance of you getting anything from, from any of us. That's us being good to people and also having common sense. I am so sick of the left and the press thinking that we have to have some godlike president to tell us what to do and what not to do. That's exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the authoritarianism that, that, that takes place here, and they actually wanted Donald Trump to be more authoritarian in his yep. approach when it came to this whole virus. That's why they say that he, quote unquote, failed, because they wanted him to shut it all, all down. They wanted a national Which, lockdown, national But if they, he would have done it, they would have said that he was a uh, fascist. Uh, yeah, that's exactly, cause, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they right. would have said. So he was damned either way um, that it went. But, you know, Senator Mike, Mike Lee, who is one of the probably him and Rand Paul only senators that I find worth a worth a crap anyway. Mm -hmm. But you see them and all they're doing is operating like normal human beings. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, leftists, the uh, corporate media, um, they want us living in fear for the rest of our lives, no matter what age that it is that we are. What I dislike about what he said more so is how he keeps saying that we're extending extending this when you look at countries like Sweden who did the opposite and they're over the hump mm -hmm. for that reason so what they're basically trying to suggest is that they get to hold us hostage for as long as they want and they're like because we're not doing what they want they get to continue to lock us down right. continue to force us to wear uh, a mask like Glenn said like I've been saying forever do whatever makes you feel comfortable that should have been the approach long ago when this thing popped off all right you can pick up the data you take whatever risk before this virus was even a thing you had viral pneumonia and all, and all of that stuff that existed where you could pass it around and if the wrong person got it they would get sick and they could potentially die it happens a lot believe it or not but the approach is that if you no matter even if you are an older person if you want to assume the risk you should be free to assume the risk if you don't want to assume it don't if the mask make you feel more comfortable okay if you're a business owner you want to have people social distancing that's your private property do what you want but don't force that on everybody else. Here's an idea. Expect the best of people. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised at what you get. September 11th happened. Did we need to have a draft? Nope. A lot of Americans said, I want to fight that evil. They went, they joined, they fought that evil. Okay, great. Ask Americans to do it and we'll do it, not because we're zombies, not because we've been hypnotized or worship someone as our God. In fact, many of us are sick to death of other things being worshiped like God other than God. Mm -hmm. State. <laughs> yeah, the state, the climate, now COVID and Fauci. I mean, he's practically a freaking golden calf that they're all bowing down to. Stop it, stop it. I agree. Well, and it. it it just seemed counterproductive. They're always talking about on the left, we need to be united as a country. We'll get through this together. But there was mm. nothing unifying about what Jake Tapper said. No, 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 no. They, the, um, Joy Reid, Michael Moore, and several others came out and said that Donald Trump was faking this. And I want to show you how uniting it is. They said the same thing the Palestinian <laughs> Authority said this weekend, <laughs> that Trump was faking it.
So they're united with all the people they like to be united with. Yeah, it sounded kind of like their approach to diversity and representation, where it's not necessarily diversity. No, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's they want the different colors and different genders or whatever saying the same thing. Yeah. So the diversity is never in thought. Right. Nazis would have Nazis would have you in. I mean, unless you were a Jew or a black, yeah. you know. But they'd have you in as long as you agreed with everything yeah, they exactly. said. <laughs> Otherwise, you're with the Jews and the blacks. That's a great point. Well, just really quickly before we go to break, a poll was taken after Trump's diagnosis, and it found that Biden was only leading by two. So. No, no. I saw an NBC poll. Do you see another one? That, okay, has him know. leading by now 14. Biden? <laughs> uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. I just, because you talked about the polls this morning. Yeah. I, they're bull crap. <laughs> they are. They're bull crap. I mean, Steve Dace has done a really good job at going through these polls. They are undersampling independents. Mm. How could you possibly at this time understand undersamples that some of these polls have 5% independents being asked? Independents. There are more people that are leaving the Democratic Party and leaving the Republican Party than yeah. ever before. I am an independent. I mean, how do you not sample those people? Well, I just think so many people make up their mind the day before the day of, too. I mean, some people are undecided right until the very end. Oh, yeah. Do you think this so. time? Well, I think as, as this continues to unfold, definitely with this COVID thing, um, and you're seeing how it's impacting, I think the closer that we get to the election, I don't think the Democrats are doing themselves any favor. I generally don't. I, I don't think they're doing themselves any favor. I think the closer we get, this continues to extend. What's going to end up happening is that you're going to see people be like, okay, Nah, this I'm not really with this. I you know, talk to my own family members and they see like the the rioting and stuff and they would generally support Democrats and right. they're like I don't like it. I don't that's not what I signed up for. I don't know if you saw Chuck Schumer what he came out and said this weekend. He said, but filibusters on the table, he said absolutely everything, including statehood for Washington DC and statehood for uh, Puerto Rico. We haven't talked about a new star on our flag since Alaska. <laughs> okay. Uh, all of a sudden, that's just on the table. table. What, I mean, you want to talk about massive, unpredictable change. People don't like change. No. Massive, unpredictable change. You're talking about the Democratic ticket. I mean, it. it everything is on the table. That's why and people take need them to decide now, right? Mm-hmm. We've right. only got a few weeks left. All right, we've got to go to break. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Keeps. Because have you noticed your hair isn't looking as full as it used to? Mine took a huge hit after having a baby. Losing your hair is no fun. So all right, let's talk some options. You can go to your doctor for a hair loss treatment prescription and then visit the pharmacy and try not to go broke just to avoid going bald. Or and COVID. <laughs> yeah, COVID, COVID, need I remind you. Exactly. So you can try keys from the comfort of your lazy boy at home. You'll get the same doctor-recommended FDA-approved hair loss treatment, but Keeps offers the generic versions for about half the cost. And one more thing that you're gonna love about Keeps, it is all online. So you just answer a few questions, you snap a few pics of your hair, and then a licensed doctor will review your info and recommend the right hair loss treatment for you. And then it's shipped directly to your door. So why make the unnecessary trips to the doctor and the drugstore when you can do it all from home? So let me get you started with a special deal. Go to keeps.com slash Y for 50% off your first order of Keeps hair loss treatments. That's keeps.com slash Y, keeps.com slash Y. We'll be right back. Artificial intelligence. We're seeing it used to do a lot of really cool really crazy and sometimes uh, really questionable things. <laughs> So the parents of a student that uh, was killed during the February 14th, 2018 mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, they recently used an artificial intelligence video of their dead son to promote gun control. And we have video of that. Yo, it's me. It's Guac. I've been gone for two years and nothing's changed, bro. People are still getting killed by guns. So creepy. What is that? Everyone knows it, but they don't do anything. I'm tired of waiting for someone to fix it. The election in November is the first one I could have voted in, but I'll never get to choose the kind of world I wanted to live in. So you've got to replace my vote. Go to unfinishedvotes.com, register, then go vote. 
Vote for politicians who care more about people's lives than the gun lobby's money. Vote for people not getting shot, bro. Bro. I mean, vote for me because I can't. We've got to keep on fighting and we got to end this. Wow. So in the aftermath of their 17 year old son, it was Joaquin. He went by Guac, Joaquin Guac Oliver's death. His parents, Manuel and Patricia, they founded a nonprofit organization called Change the Ref to help empower young people to advance reform on a number of issues, most notably gun control. Um, and the Olivers reportedly helped craft every detail of the video from their son's wardrobe to his mannerisms to the very words that he spoke. Um, the I think it is. I, I think it is. I think it's sick. I think it's really sick. First of all, um, did you did you watch his eyes in that? I mean, they're dead. They are. They uh, it's it, it's that's they could not connect with the eyes, um, which makes it even more creepy, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't imagine as a parent doing that. Um, his mother said, it's very hard to watch. I can't watch it. Of course not. It's your, it's the image of your son selling something. Mm -hmm. It's grotesque. I cannot believe that they signed off um, on that. Uh, look, I know that that's a tragic situation to lose. You know, your son, um, I've lost family members. I've lost, you know, former friends and families uh, due to even, you know, gun violence and, and stuff. But to utilize that, obviously, as this sort of opportunity to try to lecture other people. I don't I mean, I, I got to kind of hold my words on it because I got to try to understand the fact that that's they are their parents. And I guess this is their way of grieving. No, it's been I don't enough. Know. Enough is enough. My 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 brother-in-law was killed by gun violence, self-inflicted gun violence. Um, it, there is no way anyone in my family would say yes to that. There is no one in my family. We in my family do not use the finger gun to the head for a reason. Mm -hmm. We're very sensitive of all of that. Never would we use his image to do that. It's grotesque and obscene. Yeah, man, that, but that goes to show how the great links, I don't know who approached who first. Like, is the, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that that was the, uh, whoever put this together, the you don't organization. shut the door on that person though? Kind of, well, I, I of course would. Yeah. I mean, it has, no, I mean, make no mistake. What they did was insane to me. You know, it's just I'm trying to find some sort of reasoning behind it, despite whatever it is that he's saying. Of course, to me, is a bunch of hogwash or what they have him saying, because what they're doing is presenting it as if, well, this is or this has to be the position that you have if you are, you know, a young person or rather you are a person that doesn't want something like this to happen to young people, which is bogus. Like when I was that age, I used to bang. So when I was that age, I lost plenty of friends uh, or people that I knew to gun violence. And I'm here for actually it's really for that reason why I'm such an advocate for uh, for gun ownership and pe having people be able to learn how to own and operate uh, uh, some sort of weaponry or firearm, because I think that's very important when there's crazy people out there like that. So, of course, the message is just complete garbage. But I'm like, as a parent, how do you even sign off? On that, and and I think that's unfortunately what happens with a lot of folks when they when they lose their uh, loved ones to let's say something like gun violence, where they are a vi uh, innocent victim. They always look to this idea that well, if the if the state banned this, or they always talk about the gun lobbies as if they're the only people in the world that are advocates for for gun ownership and, it, and it's bogus. I don't even think these guys ever have ever really heard anybody on the other side of the aisle if they're going to come out there and say stuff like that. You know who's you know who's armed this country more than anybody else? The left. Oh, yeah. The Democrats and the left have sold more guns than any Republican or the NRA could ever and, and sell so the Democrats. Yes, they they are. They they're You cannot find ammunition in this country. That, so that was one of my next points, that ammunition faker, uh, makers, they're facing a massive order backlog. Uh, the shortage is gonna last, they think, until 2021. I ordered a gun, okay? Bing, bing, made in America. I ordered a standard SIG. I was told it could take up to a year 
before I receive it. Wow. That's insane. There are five million new gun owners, never owned a gun before, in just like the last three months. You know why? Because the Democrats will not support the police. They won't support, they're, they're saying more riots are, I'm sorry, more peaceful protests are, <laughs> are welcome, that riots are coming, they're doing everything they can to create chaos. Yeah. The average person says, police aren't coming. They told me a year and a half ago when this, when this shooting happened, they told me we need police to be the only ones with guns. Now they're telling us, Police should be the only ones with guns, but they shouldn't be on the streets and we should cut them. Of course, people are buying guns. Mm -hmm. yeah, of people, course. People are finding out the hard way, too. I've had friends on the left reach out to me living in states like California, having 10 day wait periods when they see the, the, the world crumbling around them or more so that they see riots breaking out and the, uh, people destroying property. Definitely post George Floyd. And they're saying that it gets a little clo too close to home. And then they're like, well, I may have not been on. I, I was not on board with this. And now I am because I realized I kind of got to, um, you know, protect myself. And then they realize how those laws get in the way mm -hmm. where well yeah you got to wait 10 days and, and you know you're like oh man do i have even 10 days because this may get too close to home and i need to defend they, i need to defend myself but yeah you're you're completely right that they are the biggest salesmen uh for guns and i, and I think that a lot of what they advocate is kind of antithetical to each other mm -hmm. like i said the whole yeah. all right well they they dislike the police and i'm like whatever on that just let them uh, at least allow uh people to be able to have a gun ha defend have themselves. a gun and defend themselves but then they say they want to take that too yeah and any rational person can look at that and basically say you you're wanting me to just be just a sitting duck yeah you want you want me to be an injured gazelle and you're releasing lions into the street. Well, I don't think so. For people that don't know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are billed as the strongest gun safety presidential ticket in history. The guns, well, gun I'm safety. telling you, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am telling you, you are going to see, they will pack the Supreme Court. They will get rid of the uh, filibuster. They are going to, Look at what they have written as their plan in case Donald Trump wins in, quote, a landslide. They are they're getting rid of the Electoral College. They are they are changing things fundamentally. This is their moment, they believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, they will take the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the third, fourth, fifth. They take all of them, all of them. They're passing Proposition 19. They're asking this in California, which reinstates discrimination. Mm -hmm. You have to start believing people when they say, we're doing things, we're going to get rid of guns. If it was up to me, we wouldn't have any guns. If it was up to me, you wouldn't have that right. If it was up to me, you have to start believing them because the Democrats, as we used to know them, those guys are long gone. These are Marxist revolutionaries that are authoritarian in nature. Yep, yeah, it's not all talk. They've got a plan. All right, uh, we've got to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some endorsements. Uh, times are changing, and so are some endorsements. We'll let you know who we're talking about when we come back. So the L.A. mayor, um, Eric Garcetti, he has dropped his endorsement of district attorney uh, Jackie Lacey, who's been targeted by Black Lives Matter. And they actually showed up at her house back in early March. And we have video of that. Right now, get off. Good morning. Get off of Are my porch. Shoot me? I will shoot you. Get off of my porch. Can you tell me? Jackie Lacey that we're here? I don't care. Who you are, mm -hmm. get off of my porch get off, get right off. now. We're calling the police Good. right now. Good. Okay. So, this for a district for a plate district attorney, that's the worst gun you etiquette I've ever gun seen. And pointed it at my chest. So that was her husband. Uh, he We're is... here for the community meeting, Jackie Lacey. Okay, stop. Jackie Lacey. Maybe you'll go. shoot me in the back. So her husband has since been charged for that incident. 
Uh, but Lacey, she's the city's first African-American woman to serve as L.A.'s district attorney. She's been criticized by left-wing activists for not prosecuting enough police officers and also not advocating sufficiently for policies and change on behalf of black people. So yeah. Eric Garcetti has now decided that he is going to endorse George Gascon, a former assistant police chief for mm -hmm. L.A., who has some pretty high-profile endorsers, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Governor Gavin Newsom, mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, Kamala George, Harris. And money from George Soros, million and a half dollars just went into that campaign from George Soros. Um, this is a Soros wow. candidate. He is a radical candidate. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it, I don't know if you are in California, how you don't see, how you don't feel like any German in 1933 going, things are getting a little weird here, and I'm not sure I should be here anymore. I don't know how you don't feel that from them. The, the, the same people that say they disagree with a Southern wall have built a money wall. Mm -hmm. They've trapped their own people in that state. You can't leave with your money now. You owe the state an exit tax now oh, if you're trying that's to leave. Crazy. That is crazy. That's a money wall. They trapped their people there. You better get out of California. Yeah, and that's why they did it. They know that realistically a lot of people are going to disagree with this and they, they see the craziness that's happening and they don't want to participate in that. So what they're doing is they're trying to incentivize well, more like de-incentivize them to leave and more so incentivize them to stay by trapping them in their own. That, that's creepy. I don't care who it's you creepy. are. Mm -hmm. That is very creepy that that would even be a policy um, in, in this country. And that should be something that you're paying attention to if you are someone or you have family out there um, in, in California. But, you know, when it came to Jackie Lacey, what, what, what we're seeing is what I've always said is that they'll never be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be up against the wall, the next person, if you don't operate fast enough. And it's not even fast enough. It's more they have unrealistic expectations. It's more of they want to weaponize the state for their own use. And if you don't do that, then they, of course, say you're not doing well enough. Mm -hmm. So you got to go and show up at your house. They don't care what you were an advocate of. They don't care who you supported. We saw doing the, the most funniest scene to me. During those uh, protests that were happening, post George Floyd, and you had those uh, those little white kids uh, mm -hmm. thumbs in those guys up, and they got a like a brick or whatever a, a rock thrown through their uh, window, and they're like, "We're we're we're we support you, mm -hmm. we support you." Mm -hmm. They don't care. They don't yeah. care. As as it was said to Robespierre, "You've betrayed the revolution." Exactly. So, so you're true. done. You're done. You're, you're done. And I just don't understand how people can be in those areas, right, and, and be completely oblivious to that. You know, I, ha I have to tell you, I am I'm more optimistic about things because I actually believe Christ is going to return soon. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you happen to be on that bandwagon, the last place I'd be is California. Yeah, yeah true. Right. Earthquakes, right. mudslides, We don't want fires. all of you moving to Texas either. But yeah. I, yeah, just no, saying. no, don't come here. Don't come here. <laughs> all right, we got to go to break. When we come back, we'll have our question of the day and our poll results from Friday. And we don't want everybody coming. A few of you are okay, but... All right, so on Friday we asked you, are you excited about voting in the upcoming presidential election? 86.3% of you said yes. 13.7% of you said no. I think a lot of people are maybe not as excited, but just know that they've got to do it. It's an important year. So our question for today is, are you planning on voting in the upcoming election? Yes or no? I'm pretty sure I know what the answers are at this stage. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I <laughs> You'd be surprised what my answer is. America knows what my answer is. And uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a big guy in the voting, believe it or not. Not at the presidential um, election. I've, I've held that position for a while. Locally, I can kind of more so understand it. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've been one of those so guys. So you're voting that, for Somebody today? No, no. no. Wow, see, I you would won't? have lost no, money no, on that I, I, bet. No, I won't. Okay. I won't. I won't. No, I won't. Believe it or not. No, okay. Really? No, believe it or not. No, wow. I won't. I won't. I, I, I talked to you guys about that maybe on the show. Well, I'm glad I'm not yeah, a bad woman. Love I would have lost yeah, it all today. It. I got. I got cases to make. <laughs> yeah, I got a case to make too. <laughs> <laughs> I got a case to make too. <laughs> <laughs> it's called slavery. Yeah.